Hey everybody, uh, John Barron's here from Gold or Bust or Rust. Golden, Golden Rust or Golden, Golden Rust or Bust. Yeah, you know, I just need to get a better name. Um, so I'm down here at my grandpa's. He's got a lot of stuff in here, a lot of good, good old junk, like he likes to say. And uh, we're going to be working on this project right here, which is a 1947 Doodlebug. It's a Hugh. Hugh. H O U G H. Hugh Loader. Uniloader. And what's it got for an engine in it, Grandpa? It's got a four cylinder Waukesha flathead engine. When was the last time you think this thing was run, Grandpa? Maybe about five years ago. I had it run and drove it up front, put air in the tires, but it's been at least five years for sure. Five years. It's a pretty good time sitting. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through, make sure the engine's not stuck. Um, we're going to see if we got spark, do all the kind of the stuff to revive a machine and see if we can get this old beast running again. First things first, we're gonna check the oil on the machine. Sure. Make sure. Make sure. This engine's turning. Is it? Yeah. Got oil in it. So it's got oil and engine's turning over. Up to that point. So flathead flathead engines are notorious for sticking valves if after sitting for a while. Need to just put a battery in it and See if the starter just winds her over. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is pull the plugs out. But we also, before we pull them completely out, we need to get like a chunk of hose or something that we can blow through because I don't have an air compressor back here. To Once we loosen the plugs, we need to stick the hose down there and give it a good, good blow on the hose to get the dirt so it doesn't fall in the cylinder and get caught between the valve and the valve seat or scratch the cylinder wall. Then we'll take the plugs out and put some solvent down in there or WD-40s, whatever I can find over in the other building or the other shop. And we're going to need to get a starter. And after we lubricate it, we'll turn it through by hand if we can, see if that helps any. It's awful stiff now. It's moving but the belt wants to slip as far as pulling on the fan blades and we're not sure if we're going to make it all the way around so i think to make it easy on herself we're going to get some lubricant in it and then try turning it by hand again to make sure that if we can make sure that we can get two complete turns that'll tell us that there aren't any valves stuck or if they are stuck one of them might not might be up in an up position stuck meaning that we turn the engine the valve open but the spring couldn't pull it back shut because the guide's too rusty so if that's the case that may require some additional investigation to go from there going in past the heads right well the last thing i want to do is take a head off of it okay the head gaskets are about 40 bucks for a gasket <laughs> So I don't want to pull that head if I don't have to. So right now we're going to go look for something to dump in the cylinder after we get the plugs out. And we use some kind of a blowing tube or a battery syringe, one of them things you squeeze to take water out of a battery mm -hmm. to blow the dirt away from the plug. And that's where we're at as of right now. So if you can't tell, my grandpa, I mean, he's, he's huge to me. So, uh, I mean, he's pretty much taught me everything about engines and everything like this. I mean, he's super knowledgeable. That's why I have him down here doing that. Also, it's his stuff. 
So, uh, but yeah, this thing's, this thing's pretty neat, you know? I mean, they kind of, it looks a little slapped together, but like, she's a beauty. She, she'll, she'll come back around. I know it. I know it to be true. She got a little bucket on the front here. Just perfect. Just perfect. I went and got some solvents and then I got this old gas line hose right here. What, what are you going to do? Oh, hope. Oh, 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 oh. Put the mouse on the hose. I do to put the chip. Oh boy. <laughs> Show you guys my blowing shells. LOL. You blow all shit out of it. Go to the second one over here. You can see all that stuff blowing out of them. You just do your best you can. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to take off the sparky plugs and uh, put some solvent down in there. See, my grandpa's smart. He even, he even like, labeled them way back in the day. Man, that man knows everything. Smart man. So, but yeah, do that. Check the spark. Try and fire her over. See what happens. Hopefully not an explosion. Sorry, gas burp. Um, woo. Varnishy. Nice. So a 13 16 socket is equivalent to a 20.6 millimeter. Who knew? I didn't know that. I didn't either. <laughs> That's what I thought. Can't get into there. That's why I brought the wrench. Now tell me I'm wrong on the plug size. You're wrong on the plug size? I'm wrong on the plug size. <laughs> so a 7 8 spark plug instead of a 13 16, huh? Huh. So while Grandpa looks for a 7 8 wrench, I found a 7 8 big, big socket doohickey machine thing. It's just a socket, you know? Just gonna go over the top like. Any oozles. So I'm gonna work on getting. Uh, the ones that I can get to undone with this and uh, see if we can get some solvent to them. <laughs> So now I'm going to add some uh, oil and some solvent to each cylinder. That's a good sound. It's a nice sound right there. Like uh, Taco Bell on like a really bad day. <laughs> or hot mac and cheese or that good eh. you know what I mean that good stuff right there for a spritz of the good stuff oh grandpa got the light going that's good Get it in the hole, Johnny. Come on. So in order to make sure that we get the, you know, crank to go all the way around twice, what we're going to do is we're going to put them down, the, I don't know if you can see it, but down there on the crankshaft. So then when it comes around twice, then I know that I've made two full rotations. So Grandpa's got me a pencil here. And uh, I'm just going to see if I can make a, Good enough mark. That should work. I can see that. So then I'm gonna rotate the engine around twice and uh, make sure that we can rotate it around twice. Yeah. So Grandpa got a stick to see how much gas is down in the bottom. What's it smell like, Grandpa? 
Smells pretty old. Pretty varnishy. Woo! It's pretty good stuff. I haven't put gas since I got it running. And that's probably over 20 years ago. So we're looking at the same gas. Same gas. Same gas. So the same gas is five years ago when you ran it. Well, I don't think I put gas in then either. You didn't put gas in then either. No, I think we're running on, we've got 20-year-old fuel in that tank. woo -hoo. At least 20 years since I put that engine in here. We've got two choices. We can either add some fresh fuel to it and see whether that'll work, or come up with some way to get below the tank here and disconnect the fuel line and drain it. Drain it out and start with fresh fuel. What do you think? I don't know. There's not a lot of fuel in the tank. There's only maybe a gallon, maybe. Maybe a little over a gallon. So you think we'd be okay probably just adding some? I think maybe if we just added added a gallon of fresh to it, we might be able to get lucky and work. We can we can disconnect the line at the uh, carburetor and possibly run all that right on out that way too. Yeah, yeah, that might work. The carburetor line is easier to get to than, than underneath the tank. Under the tank. Yeah, carburetor comes in down underneath your in, in or your exhaust. We're down here, carburetor. So yeah, the gas line ramp is right. Ramp. Whoa, there's gas line down here. This is the yeah. gas line. Yep, and it goes through this fuel filter. Fuel filter. What's down there? Yep. And there's a petcock on the bottom of that. Well, maybe we could drain it right there and then. I Perfect. Think. We'll try that first, and and then we'll see. So here's your carburetor. And this is what you would call an updraft carburetor because it's sucking fuel in and up through it. So a little different than, you know, your nowadays carburetors where kind of straight draft or down draft. This is an updraft carburetor, which is not seen very much anymore. And then you got your fuel filter down here, and that has a shutoff valve on the bottom of it. And then you also have... Your carburetor that has a shutoff valve or a, a drainage valve, not shutoff valve, sorry guys. So drainage valve on your fuel filter, drainage valve on your carburetor, and then you also have a petcock down there for your shutoff valve for your gas tank. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to drain the gas down and out the bottom of our fuel filter. That's what we're going to do next. But uh, yeah, so uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to throw a battery in her, uh, crank her over a few times, give her the old swirly do, and uh, see if we got spark and see if she pops and comes back to life for us. So yeah, we also got a fire extinguisher in case, you know, fires. Well, we got the battery in, we took all the spark plugs out, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually crank her over and see if we can, you know... Make her make her crank over nice and smooth for us. Then after that, we'll probably check spark and give her give her some go go juice or some gasoline and see if she fires up. So right now, what he's doing is he's testing to see that we got power coming to the coil, which seems mm -hmm. like we do. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the distributor cap. Open the distributor cap? Yeah, we got to get into the points. Okay. You heard the man. We're going to do that. From what I'm seeing, looking at the big picture here where it's enlarged, the points are all white. The stationary point and the movable point that's on the blue arm. Which is on this arm They're all here. full of corrosion. Yep. So there's corrosion down here on our points. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a point file and we're going to file those clean so then we can have, you know, good 
breakage of the voltage to create the spark. So, yeah, and you can look down there. My screwdriver is doing the same thing the points do. They make ground in order to energize the coil. So me opening and closing the points and grounding at the same time is causing the coil to function. And how are you grounding it? You're grounding I'm your... just grounding about anything I can hit in here where the sparks are flying. That's where it's grounding right now. If I if I hold it tight and make ground, that's the same as the points being totally closed. If I pull the screwdriver away, that's the same as the points opening. So at that time, the coil discharges. The magnetic field in the coil collapses, and high voltage is produced and discharged, which we saw coming out of the end of this homemade coil wire. So our next step is turn the switch off, and then try to get those points cleaned so that they make contact on their own. Right now, the corrosion is keeping them from making contact. So we cleaned the points up. And now Grandpa's going to bump the starter and uh, see if we got spark going through our coil. Go ahead. <laughs> Looks like we do. You did. <laughs> Good thing we're short, Grandpa. Yes, that works. Okay. The joke is this ring. Yep, pull it out. Yep, I got that. Well, here goes nothing, I guess. The alternator's not working. We got a poor connection on the oil pressure bulb. But it's working now. Both bulbs are on. When the engine gets going, they're supposed to start. They're supposed to go out. Here we go. Whoa! There we go! <laughs> oh try again Well, we got her running good. She's idling. Smoke is from the oil I put on top of the cylinders. Hopefully it goes away. Otherwise, we got a, maybe a ring stuck or something. Uh, yeah, she uh, she's idling good. Sounds good. So uh, we got just under 40. Just under 40. Right there. Just under 40 pounds. Alternator's not working. So, we're gonna mess around with it a little bit more, see if we can get that alternator to kick in. Uh, move a bunch of stuff to get it outside. So, we'll get right back. So, moment of truth, see if it fires back up and we'll move out of its grave. Is the choke reconnected? The yeah. Air yes. Hose yep. On? Yep. Okay. So you pull to out for choke, Grandpa. 
Fired right up. Oh, moved a little bit. Bucket goes. That's the first time it's seen sunlight in a while. Take it over in the shade. Take it over in the shade. Low range. Low range. Into high, she's going into high now, or? Oh, she's a ripper. Works good, Grandpa. Your turn. My turn. Okay, it's recording. Okay. So now whatever it's whatever it's showing you is what. So yeah, that's you. <laughs> so no, that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You can. If you can stop in the shade, we've got enough airline, I think, we can stay in the shade, okay. at least with the wheels. Alrighty. Shut it off. Did that oil? Did the alternator ever Not light go saw. off? Not that I saw. Okay. Well, that contact may not be doing very good. <laughs> I'm not doing real good on this camera taking. I'm not a <laughs> cameraman. No, you're just the mechanic, right, Grandpa? Well, I don't know what the hell I am. <laughs> There she is in all her glory. All her wonderful, rusty, crusty, rip seat glory. Just, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't see anything else here on, on Golden Ruster Bus. I mean, we got we got it all. We got we got everything. In fact, I'll show you some more stuff around here, you know. But uh but yeah, look at look at this thing. Look at this thing. Now that's pretty cool. I mean, you don't see much of that stuff in your around anymore. I mean, a lot of it's been junked, been crushed, been scrapped, turned. Thankful my grandpa hung on to a lot of this stuff because it's pretty good stuff to have around when you're in a bind or in a pinch. So, but yeah, she's a good looking machine. In case you couldn't tell, this building is uh, fairly large. There's a lot of good stuff in here, you know. He's got mopeds right there. It's got some engines laying around, you know, Polaris. 
then back here this is where I was sitting uh what did i what did i come back here to grab came back here to grab something this i need that which is an air truck and then uh and here's got you know golf cart this is what i want you boys to see look at that behemoth That, my friends, is a Detroit Dieschel, Michigan. That's that's a that's an end loader. Hold on. Get closer and give you boys a better look. Look at this thing. Look at look at this thing. Look at the size of these tires. That's how tall these tires are. This this machine is. Big. I mean, the size of the bucket on this. So, uh, if you guys want to see this thing, you know, fire up and crush this boat that's in the back, let me know. Because I really want to crush that boat with it. I think it'd be cooler and shit. So, uh, yeah. And if you don't know what the boat I'm talking about, I'm talking about that one. Right there. So, like I was saying, there's a lot of cool stuff around here that, uh, I wouldn't mind trying to fire up on my channel. Uh, another one of those cool things that probably not a lot of people have seen or don't even know exist is uh, this John Deere crawler. That's what I want to get fired up next. It's like a bulldozer crawler. John Deere will uh, definitely uh, definitely need to get a video on this. I think. What do you boys want to see? You guys want to see that Michigan or this John Deere move? I think this Mich this John Deere would be neat to get running again. It has ran in 30, 30 years now. I don't remember what he said. 25 or 30 years this machine has been sitting here. So, uh, if you guys want to see a revival on that, let me know in the comments too. So, uh, we'll, we'll have to get a, a little uh, tally or a, a poll going, seeing what people want to see. So, do your ending. Well, this was the 19... 47 Q front loader end loader. We call it the doodle bug, but uh, so we got it running um, Got it driving got it out put some air in its tires put uh, hydraulic fluid in it and Hopefully we can get her running pretty good so we can Put her back to work and not get her out of the barn. So um, But yeah, and in this big barn, there's there's also a Michigan and a and a uh, John Deere crawler too. So let me know if you guys want to see those in future videos. And and uh, Grandpa, come back, come out here, and you say goodbye too. So. Basically, <laughs> wave. <laughs> so I want to thank thank my Grandpa for everything he's taught me and for having keeping all these relics around. I haven't got any good common sense. <laughs> Why's that? I got too much junk. <laughs> and I'm damn near getting too old to work on it anymore. That's where I come in. Okay. <laughs> That's why I've tried to train him, and he's done pretty good, really. Considering where he started from, he's come a long, long way. <laughs> well... Like, I, uh, like I've said before, like and subscribe to this video. Uh, like and subscribe to my friends, uh, Junkyard Diggs, Kevin, Junkyard Mook. Uh, they just got a new dog, so congratulations to them. And um, uh, Thunderhead289 and all the other ones I've mentioned before. And thank you for very much for tuning into this video, and I'll see you next time.